Mom hacks are not always as good as they seem. Today I have found five stupid mom hacks or silly mom hacks if you want to say it nicely. These mom hacks are simply not a good idea for most people in most situations. So let's jump right in to these five silly mom hacks. Number one, freezing water balloons, putting them in a cooler to then cool down drinks. Let's just say you're putting Pepsis in a cooler outside at a barbecue. So you're gonna make water balloons, tie them up, go put them in the freezer. Now you have this frozen water balloon, you're putting them in here and it's cooling down the drinks in the cooler. It's keeping the cooler chilled. You could have just used ice, which would have worked and been simple. Okay, the cooler gets a little waterlogged after a while. Not a big deal. Instead, we have these frozen water balloons. Okay, so you might explain to your children, hey, we don't throw these till later. We can't use these yet and your children understand. But guess what, you're having a party. You have other people's kids there. You are busy socializing as are other parents. All it takes is one kid grabbing one of these, say a five-year-old chucks one of these frozen water balloons at a two-year-old. That's like throwing a rock at a kid. That could do some serious damage. It could do damage to people. It could do damage to your home as well. This isn't a great hack. It's just silly. If you want to do water balloons, make a cooler that has water balloons in it. Have the other cooler have ice with your drinks. It's just, it's too much. It's too much. You don't need it. Okay, stay safe, stay simple. Number two is doing laundry daily, but mixing the loads. So I watch random YouTubers here, there. They'll have like six kids, eight kids. And they're like, yeah, every day everybody just chucks their dirty clothes in the washer. And they're like, every day I do a load. I don't agree with that because to me then, okay, that load comes through the wash, through the dryer, and I have to put one outfit in everyone's room in the home or everyone's dresser in the home. That doesn't seem worthwhile. And then some of these people will also say, well, my kids just, they live out of kind of like the washer and the dryer. So when the kids' clothes are dry, they'll leave them in the laundry room and the kids just wear them the next day. I'm like, so you're wearing two outfits? Every other day you just rotate two outfits? It just seems silly to me. If they have clothing in their closet, I want us to rotate through the clothing kind of and get use out of all of it. I don't understand mixing loads of laundry. It's not, not my jam. Occasionally I do it when it makes sense, but in general, I would rather everyone have a hamper and I agree, every single day you should do laundry, but it should be one person's laundry, ideally. Maybe two people if you need to combine. And I will say, if you combine, say you got all these kids, boys, girls, do 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 I wouldn't do the five-year-old girl's clothes with the seven-year-old girl's clothes because you have to look at the tag and say, okay, these are five pants, these are seven pants. Like you have to look at the number versus I would pick my 10-year-old son and my five-year-old daughter and put their clothes together because you're not gonna get those pants mixed up. You're not gonna get those shirts mixed up. It's easy sorting, done. You split the load in half, put it away. That's how I would do laundry. And again, daily isn't the problem, it's the mixing that I find to be a problem. I'm a fan of hampers and I'm a fan of doing one person's clothing. Number three is cleaner painting supplies. So if you have kids and they like to paint, it gets messy. The world seems to keep inventing new things to make it cleaner. They have these little cups and they'll have like a hole in the top and the paintbrush goes in and then it comes out and do, 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 do. And you do all these things and the kid still gets messy. They're still going to get messy. Maybe you can mitigate it a little bit, but if you're cleaning up one spot of paint, what's the difference between cleaning up five? And at the end of the day, you have to clean up the whole paint situation. Now say you used cups like that and you poured the paint in the cup. Now you have to wash those cups. How did that save you work? I truly think some of these like clean painting supplies are just creating more work. Like, would it be nice to have a smock on your kid? Sure. Maybe just take their shirt off, though, and just go without. Quit adding things, because the more things you add, the more things you have to clean. Okay? So I'm just going to say it. I think painting cleaner supplies are a dumb mom hack, generally and typically. Painting gets messy. Either you accept it or you don't. Let your kids paint or don't. Maybe you're not a painting family. Quit trying to make it the perfect painting scenario. It's not going to happen. Work with them. Teach them how to be tidy and over time they will learn and they will get it. Okay, number four is a frozen sponge in the lunchbox. So I've heard this tip. You're gonna take a sponge in your kitchen. You're gonna wet it under the sink. You're gonna, I guess, freeze it or put it in a Ziploc baggie first, freeze it. Now you have a frozen sponge. Your kid goes to school the next day. You're gonna pack their lunch, put this frozen Ziploc baggie sponge in their lunchbox to act as a freezer block would. Send them off to school. And then people will say they can take the sponge out of the Ziploc baggie and wipe their table when they're done. I don't think that's the most realistic. And also, what if they just make a mess and they get a ton of water everywhere? I just, I don't think it's worth it. You could do this magical thing called buy a freezer block, put it in the freezer and use the same one every single day. And honestly, what's the difference between buying a Ziploc baggie and a sponge versus a cheap, cheap freezer block? 
I just don't think it's necessary. I think if anything, you're creating more work here. And I think it's really silly, honestly. And kids are also going to look at your kid and be like, why do you have a frozen sponge? Don't overcomplicate. Don't give yourself more work and more steps. My fifth hack, I don't mean to be controversial here, but it involves a car seat. And I've seen where people are potty training their kids and they will lift up in the car seat some of the padding, put a diaper underneath, like open it up, put it underneath, put the padding back down, put their kid in. Now here's the thing, they're not even putting it on the top layer. So their kid is peeing and it's just catching underneath. So I guess the point is that it doesn't go all the way through to your seat. But overall, the car seat's still getting peed on. You're still gonna have to take the car seat apart, wash the car seat. Now you just have a diaper underneath. It is not considered safe to alter a car seat in any way. This is definitely considered doing so. So I don't, I don't get it. I don't see the need. When we potty trained, we just were really careful. We timed things out. We didn't go too far from the house and we just worked with our child on it. I've I've seen different versions of this. Overall, you probably shouldn't do it. I saw one recently and it was like a puppy pad, which is about yay thin. And they did it on the top layer. And I was like, okay, if I was going to do it, that would be what I would do. I mean, if you're really worried about it, put a diaper on your kid, I guess, but work with your kids. Stay home when they're potty training. Like, sorry. Sometimes that's just part of life. You shouldn't be altering the car seat. And again, it's helping keep things cleaner, but you're still going to have to clean. Cleaning is a part of parenting. It just is. And you can't hack your way out of cleaning in general. Like you're going to have to clean up after your children. So quit looking for hacks and solutions. Instead, just get to work and do the work. So what are your thoughts on some of these mom hacks? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Which one do you think is the best, the worst? Share in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any other crazy or silly mom hacks you want to share, feel free to comment those as well. I just urge you to please, please, please ignore stupid mom hacks. And if you are considering a mom hack, you're like, oh, that sounds good. First consider, are they asking me to buy a product? Got to watch out for that. Along with that, are they asking you to buy a frequently used product and an affordable product? Take, for example, the great cutter things. People love those. I don't have one. They don't seem like a bad thing to me. I'm like, okay, if you've got four kids and you're always cutting grapes, cool, buy that. But when it's a hack for an item that you literally never use, don't, don't buy it. Don't buy more things and bring more things into your home. Also make sure it's reducing steps, not increasing the steps in a task or a process you have to do. Finally, just don't get sucked into mom hacks, okay? Alrighty, I hope to see you back here for the next one. Thanks so much for tuning in.